Welcome back. Today we're going to uh, continue in measurement geometry with the angle theorems for a triangle. So first let's talk about um, um, the measurement of a straight angle. Now a straight angle is just a straight line. Okay, so if I have a straight line right here, what is the measurement of this line? Now what I mean by that is, um, I mean that if I had a protractor and I were to measure um, an angle from here to here, what would be that measurement? Well, this is a one way of looking at it. Since a straight angle is half of, um, this angle is half of the circle, like this, and we know that the entire circle um, is 360 degrees, has angles of 360 degrees, um, then half of that would be 180. So a straight angle or a straight line has the measurement uh, of 180 degrees. Okay. Now this is going to prove very, very important to us later on because it's going to um, make it nice and easy for us to find a missing angle. So for instance, if I have what's called a linear pair, so it is a pair of angles that sort of cuts a straight line in two. So I have this angle right here. I'm going to mark it with red. And I have this angle right here. And I know, for instance, that this angle is 40 degrees. Then what I know absolutely is that the other one's 140 degrees because together they make up this whole line, right? And I know that the whole line is um, 180 degrees, so each one must add up to 180, okay? And so a straight line has 180 degrees, and it's also called a straight angle. Okay, um, the angle sum theorem for triangles is um, the sum of all angles inside of a triangle is 180 degrees. Okay, so 180 degrees is equal to the measurement of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C. Okay, so I want you to note that I'm using this notation here. This means measurement of angle A. or that's how that's read, so I'll put it in quote, uh, quotation marks. Okay, now the reason for this is um, that for any triangle, something interesting happens. So let's say I take these angles, and I'm gonna um, draw them first, and then I'm gonna put them all together. So here's this angle, okay, and I'm gonna take it away from here. So there's angle A, and then angle, and you know what, I should have actually done it in red, so that you could have seen it right here. Oops. There's angle A. Okay, and angle B, let's take this angle and recreate it over here. And angle C. Okay, so I'm gonna pull them all together and something really neat happens. So these are all the angles, right? Let me turn them around so that they're all, they all sort of um, lie on the straight line. So if I put them together like this, something really cool happens that all of them fit together and they all fit along a straight line, like that. So this happens for any triangle that you draw. I could have drawn any sort of triangle. I could have drawn um, a triangle that was an equilateral triangle like this. I could have drawn a right triangle like this. I could have drawn an isosceles triangle like this. Um, but for any triangle, this works, right? So if I can take, let's see, this is one angle here. I'll take another angle right up here. And I'll take one, this other one right here. That if I pull these angles away and I put them all together, let's turn this one around, put them all together like this, that they all fit together to get a straight line, right? And what do we already know about a straight line? We know that the measurement of a straight angle is 180 degrees. So if I took this whole measurement right here, right, this is 180 degrees. And that is why the measurements of the angles inside of a triangle, the interior angles of a triangle, all measure to be 180 degrees altogether. Now, we may not know anything about the individual's angles themselves, but we know that they sum in order to get 180. And this is going to be very helpful to us. Okay, so for instance, if I were asked to find the missing angle of a triangle, well, this one's the, the angle that's missing. By the way, um, this angle right here, this 100 degree angle, 
So I could say the measurement of angle D is 100 degrees. This is often how we write this. If D is the vertex, then we will refer to the angle um, that is created by that vertex as um, it will have the same name as the vertex. Okay. So the measurement of angle D is 100 degrees. Um, anyhow, I'm looking for the measurement of angle E. That's what I'm looking for. Well, if I know that the other two angles add up to 155 degrees, then, and I know that all together it's 180 degrees, then I can just subtract these two to get uh, 25, and I know that the measurement of angle E is 25 degrees. So that's a nice helpful way of using um, the angle sum theorem for a triangle. Okay, um, another theorem for a triangle is a theorem that involves um, what we call exterior angles and remote interior angles. So let's first define interior and exterior. Interior angles of a triangle um, are formed by two sides of the triangle. So um, angles one, angle two, and angle three are all interior. They're inside the triangle. All right. An exterior angle is formed by one side of the triangle and the extension of an adjacent side. So angle four is such an angle in this diagram. So it's the ex we extend this side, so we uh, keep drawing a line beyond the, uh, where it ends the triangle. And it's the angle formed by the extension of one side and, the, and another side of the triangle. So if we look at the, um, the line segments that create angle four, it's one of them is actually a side of the triangle and the other one is an extension of the side. Okay, I could do this with any of the sides. I could create, um, I could extend this side and this would be another angle, I could call that angle five. I could extend this side and this would be another angle, that's angle six. Likewise, I could extend this side and this would be another, uh, let me see, actually, Let's take away angle five for just a minute. I could extend this side. That was angle five, right? Or I could have extended uh, this side, and that's another angle, okay? Because it's, it's created with one side of the triangle and the extension of another side. All right, so let's just focus on angle four for a minute here, okay? Now, um, the exterior angle is always equal to, this is another theorem, an exterior angle has two remote interior angles. So to, in, in relation to four, the remote interior angles are the ones that are furthest away from four. So notice that three is right adjacent to four, adjacent meaning next to. So four's remote exterior uh, interior angles is going to be one and two. If I were to draw um, an exterior angle five, five's remote interior angles would be one and three. If I were to draw another one, six here, Six is remote interior angles would be two and three because they're the ones that are not adjacent to it. So I take away the adjacent one and the two remaining ones are the remote interior. Okay, so let's go back to focusing on angle four for a minute. All right, so with angle four, the remote interior angles are the ones that are not adjacent to it. Okay, so it's, it's dependent. Um, I can't just say what are the remote interior angles. I have to tell you what the exterior angle is first and then I can define the remote interior angles in relationship to the exterior angle. Okay, now what this says is that the sum of the two remote interior angles, uh, the measurement of angle one plus the measurement of angle two, is always going to be equal to the measurement of the remote exterior, or the exterior angle. So this is the angle theorem that involves exterior uh, angles and remote interior angles. So whatever your exterior angle is, it's always going to be equal to the sum of the other two angles here. All right, and let's put this into action. Now, if I'm trying to find the measurement of angle B and angle A, then I can create an equation that I can solve in order to, do, to find the angle, uh, measurement of angle A and angle B by using the exterior angle theorem. theorem. Because right here, this right here is um, a exterior angle. It's created by the extension of one side of the triangle and the um, the act and the side of the. It's created by using the side of a triangle and the extension of another side. So um, its remote interior angles are angle A and angle B. So I know that these two must add together to get angle 52. 
So here I can create an equation 4y minus 4 plus 3y has to be equal to 52. Okay? So again, the sum of the rem remote interior angles is equal to the measurement of the exterior angle. So let's go ahead and solve this. This is 7y minus 4 is equal to 52. I add 4 to both sides. I have 7y is equal to 56. Whoops, 56. And divide by 7, I have y is equal to 8. Okay, now I haven't answered my question because my question, I, it, I can use y to answer the question, um, but um, I have to put it back in here. So this would be equal to 4 times 8 minus 4, which is 32 minus 4, which is 28. So the measurement of angle A is equal to 28 degrees. Okay. Now the measurement of angle B is equal to 3 times 8, which is 24 degrees. And if I wanted to get angle A, I could use the other um, triangle theorem that we learned before, which is that the sum of all of them must be equal to um, 180 degrees. So I could add uh, 28 plus 24 together to get 52. And I can take that away from um, 180, so that would be 20, uh, 128 degrees, right? That would be 10. This, uh, oh, I don't need to borrow from there. So that would be 10, that would be 7, and 8 and 2. So 128 degrees. So, the, so I actually know that the measurement of angle C is equal to 128 degrees, just by finding the measurement of A and B. And I've been given um, the measurement of D. So notice that 52 is equal to uh, 28 plus 24. Right, it's a measurement of the exterior is equal to the, two, the sum of the remote interior. And that is the end of the lesson for today.